Hello, welcome again to our GeoCam series on sequence stratigraphy. This module will focus on strata termination surfaces and system structs. Now, in evaluating the relationship between uh, a strata and its uh, overlying or underlying surface, we look out for uh, the nature of the deep direction between the surface and the strata, the transport source. So the question here is, are the sediments coming from land to sea or sea to land? And then we also want to figure out, uh, based on placement, is it above or below the bounding surface? And then what's the deep angle between the surface and the strata bed? So these are all the elements we actually, you know, consider in deciding what type of termination uh, are we uh, looking at. Now, there are a number of terminations. We have on-lapse, down-lapse, top-lapse, um, erosional truncation, concordance, and uh, some authors also add off-lap. Now, let's go into on-lapse. So, uh, well, I have this little sketch here that says a short put experiment or exp example. Now, imagine, um, well, someone, you know, as shown, <laughs> throwing a short put uh, in this direction from right to left, as uh, shown. Um, the idea here is the tra trajectory of that, um, the, the object he threw, actually defines what we call the um, stratal bed or the strata um, you know, uh, package itself, uh, or in some other context, the clinoform. Uh, another message here is that the point at which the object actually hit the surface in the up-deep area is called the on-lap termination point. That's like the on-lap termination point. So the two things, we're looking at the trajectory and also the on-lap uh, termination points. That's where it hits, uh, where the object actually hits the blue surface. Now, this is just an analog, but the idea here is this scenario plays out where you have a rising sea level, in which case the shoreline is moving landwards. So that means the sediments that have been deposited have come from the offshore or the seaward uh, or the basinal areas have been deposited more in the landward uh, direction. So generally, in terms of on-lap termination, uh, the trajectory of movement is landwards. The termination is up deep. Um, the strata and the surface often dips uh, in you know, most cases they dip in opposite direction, but there are cases where they actually uh, fairly dip in the same direction. And an, an example of this uh, surface, uh, on-lap surface, is the transgressive surface of erosion. So this is a down-lap uh, termination example. So in this case, it's a flip of it. Uh, the football case, in, in, in this case, the um, fellow here has kicked the football uh, in the direction from land to sea. Uh, similarly, we're seeing these conditions apply where the sea level um, is being consistently reducing or falling, in which case the shoreline is moving seawards. Uh, so here we see that the trajectory again reflects the, the strata package or the, the, the strata beds and the point at which the object or the football here hits uh, this, the blue surface or the downlap surface in the basinal area is called the um, down dip or down lap termination. So overall, uh, trajectory here is seawards. Termination is in the down dip or basinal area. Uh, that means sediments have come from land and moving towards the sea area. And that's, like I said, is actually associated with reduction in sea level. And uh, an example of this uh, down lap surface, uh, that's a blue surface, is a sequence boundary. This is another case which I call the target eat example. Um, the fellow here again is trying to target something up that tree, uh, but he has to aim top, upwards. So the object he is throwing actually uh, terminates on the blue surface in the topward uh, direction, at the top of him, that's up in the upward uh, sense uh, in terms of relationship between his position and the surface itself. So overall, here we're looking at uh, either a rising or a stable sea uh, condition, and that's typical of local bypass or erosion. Uh, it's kind of similar to where you have, you know, clear-cut erosion, but there are cases where top-lap uh, surfaces are not necessarily indicative of erosion. It just means that there's been non-deposition or there's some kind of bypass. So overall, 
um, the strata uh, and sediments may dip in the same or opposite direction. Uh, here we're saying movement has occurred from sea to land uh, in this very case, uh, and the patterns are also indicative, uh, can be indicative of non deposition or erosion. Now, this is the summary of the, well, conceptual sketch of the different uh, strata surfaces at ter termination, uh, strata termination surfaces. Uh, as I show, as I've shown here, on lap in the upper left, um, upper right, down lap, and you can actually observe the sense of strata movement and also the nature of the underlying uh, termination surface that's in blue. We also have the erosional truncation uh, in in the middle, uh, and then also on the top lap to the right middle section, and then below it we have the concordance, either the concordance from top to down or from down to up. Either way, these are the different kind of relationships we have. Uh, depending on the direction of movement of whatever stratigraphic um, you know um, units we're looking at, and it also tells us what has really happened in terms of sea level movements, um, land to sea or sea to land, and also um, the nature of you know how aggressive the change in terms of sea level had been, because you can actually see in some cases you have erosion, in some other cases you don't have erosion. All right, so we'll talk about system tracts, uh, which is actually the next part of this chart. Now, system tracks, well, as defined by Posamentia, actually refer to a set of associated uh, stratigraphic units which were deposited during a particular phase of the relative sea level cycle. Um, I also rephrase that to actually uh, say that system track refers to a subdivision of the depositional sequence which reflects a given behavior of the sea level. You know, like I mentioned earlier on in uh, earlier uh, modules, the sea level has got a, a falling and a rising cycle. So there's a phase where it is falling, there's a phase where it is rising, and there's also a third phase where uh, it's actually very high sea level but stable. That's like the third uh, phase. So we also want to look at it in that, in that sense of it. So system tracks uh, generally uh, can be either in the falling stage or the low stand uh, stage, or the transgressive stage, or the high stand stage. And that is actually driven by the overall um, stacking patterns of the parasequences, the position in the depositional sequence, is it the falling or the stable or the rising stage, and also the nature of the bounding surfaces. Now, this is an outcrop section that kind of, um, I actually like this section because it shows um, some kind of, you know, an example of what we see in most uh, or in some seismic sections that uh, depicts typical uh, strata termination types and surfaces for a typical low stand, transgressive and high stand uh, system structure. I'm just going to walk you through it. Now for the low stand, um, if you want to also focus on the, the chart on the lower left, right, it shows you here that the sea level is falling. And then the box on the upper left also shows, in terms of parasequence stacking, we have prograde to aggrade uh, or progradational to aggradational stacking pattern. So on the outcrop, uh, what we see here is moving in the direction of the arrow. We're going from point one to two, and that tells us that the sea level is actually uh, falling, and sediments are moving from land, that's from left, to sea, that's on the right. And then, supposing we go to a late phase of this uh, low stand system tracks, where we now have more of, you know, every every packet that moved from up deep areas and landward areas have made their way further down the basin, uh, right here. So what we see more of here, we see more of aggregational uh, type stacking for this um, um, package or for this um, sediment. And again, if you focus more, again, if you go back to the you know, the chart on the lower left, which shows the sea level um, cycle, we see that in terms of sediment, in terms of deposits, types of deposits, we have channel fields, low stand wedges, basin floor fans, and in the late stage of it, we have progradational uh, complexes and low stand wedges. Now, this is the second phase, which is the transgressive system tract. So here, we'll focus again on the arrow, uh, on the blue, um, the cyan colored lines and the, 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 arrow, the black arrow that goes from right to left. So if you notice, we have uh, above the TSE, which is the transgressive surface of erosion, we have a bunch of on-lap 
uh, terminations on that on that uh, light blue surface. So from point one to point two, three, four, and five tells you each the progressive movement of the sea uh, as you go from you know, right to left. So in this case, we're saying that the sea level was progressively increasing from point one to two to three to four and then five. And that's actually the transgressive phase of the sea level. In terms of uh, parasequence stacking, uh, we have you know, dominantly retrograde or retrogradational uh, parasequence uh, you know, sets. And that's, as we earlier discussed, that tells us that the sea level is rising and we have uh, progressively uh, deeper marine or deeper water fascias deposited in the landward direction. If you focus on the um, chart on the lower left, again, you, and if you look at that curve, it tells you that the, the TST is actually the phase where the sea level has started rising. Now, after the transgressive uh, phase, we have the last phase, which is the high stand system tract. And that's actually the phase where the sea level has reached its peak and is stable for a given period of time. So the whole of that period, uh, in terms of parasequence stacking, we have a grade, prograde, and degrade um, um, phase of stacking. That means uh, the sediments or the strata, for the most case, initially they are grade. If you focus on the arrow from one, two, three, four, five, it's like you have vertical stacking of sediments or strata units on top of each other. So that means we don't have progressively deeper or shallower uh, water fascias. What we just have is a steady state of the sea level and in terms of bathymetry, uh, all the fishes that have been deposited are very uh, close in terms of their environment of deposition and their water depth. So uh, from f 1 to 5, we have it, it aggrades, and then at the late stage of it, it begins to prograde. That means a bit of basinal or seaward um, um, placement of each successive, um, you know, fascias. And then you have the erosional phase above it. That's the sequence boundary, which comes and kind of, you know, erodes the upper half of what has been deposited as a degrade phase. So um, the idea of this is actually to show relationship between the direction of stacking of the parasequences and the bounding surfaces. So if we look at the low stand, we see that it's actually bounded below by the sequence boundary and above it by the TSE, which is the transgressive surface of erosion. The transgressive system tracks actually is bounded below by the TSE, that's the transgressive surface of erosion, and above it by the maximum flooding surface, that's the MFS, right? And the HST, which is the high stand system tract, is bounded below by the, uh, the maximum flooding surface and above it by the overlying sequence boundary. So this phase uh, can actually repeat itself. We have another phase of low stand, in which case we have progradational stacking. Um, we see very clear examples of... Um, uh, downlap uh, terminations on the sequence boundary. And then we have another phase of transgression, which now brings uh, sediments from the seaward or the deep water um, portions and then deposits them progressively landward. So here we see very good example of onlap um, uh, terminations. All right, so this slide just shows that uh, if we decide to you know stick a well in different locations, uh, not all system tracks are encountered because of, again, the differential, the position, and depending on where you are placed. So there are areas where you see all system tracks are preserved, but there are some other areas where one or two might be missing, depending on the relationship between the overlying and underlying um, um, strata, uh, stratigraphic units. Okay. All right. So thank you for listening. Uh, in our next episode, we'll be looking at the depositional sequences type one and type two sequences and then hopefully we'll be able to wrap things up and uh, put the whole story together so thanks for listening if you do have questions please um send me your questions you can send me an email or chat me up on whatsapp on facebook or youtube uh, i do appreciate hearing from you and i'll be glad to respond